This is my modern meow gown, and it's made out of silk bazaar in a green chartreuse color, reflecting the rice fields of the meow village. And I was very much inspired by the shape of the um, baby carrier. As you can tell, on the side view, there's a protruding shape here, which actually carries the baby. But I made this more into a modern kimono feeling. I also put on some of the meow silverware which is very detailed here, and I wanted to reflect their culture as well on this too. This is called my Wushu butterfly gown, and this was actually inspired by a little girl that I met in the Buyi village. I was so welcomed by her. I wanted to represent her because she was like a butterfly to me. And in fact, this has a little bit of a spirit to it as well. But you can tell that I really reflected on the silhouette of the butterfly in the front. I also even put the batik just to reflect their culture and what they do for their batik work. But if you look in the back here, this also carries the batik work. So it has a little bit of detail. There's like the silhouette of the butterfly shape. This is my Meow Batik design, and I was very much inspired by their applique. I really wanted to keep their integrity of the work and not distort it too much. So I incorporated this in their center panel as well as the back panel. And if you look at the silhouette, I incorporated a little bit of the modern twist of architectural lines as well, something that I love to do. When you turn around in the back, there's a little bit of a carrier here and you can see the shape protruding out here. And I have inserted in here our yarn balls that reflects their hair pieces. And the Meow people definitely use that as part of their hair ornament. And of course, you can see also the silver hair ornament that I incorporated. This is called Hung Gua Shu Waterfall Gown, and I really wanted to represent something from nature. Of course, that's something that I really love is nature. And as you can tell, this has to reflect the waters, the silk chiffon, very soft and flowy. So it's draped really soft. But if you can tell, I also incorporated the mushroom pleating, the details of the Miao uh, tribal uh, technique that they used on their pleating skirts. So I did a little small portion of it, as you can tell, and it's all like pleated about a quarter inch each width. As I made this detail, you can tell the flow of the waterfall coming down in the front. Of course, I added this little quaint little ribbon. When I went there to the waterfalls, I saw a lot of ribbon, red ribbons, um, tied on the bamboo, which must have meant some kind of message. And I felt that was very significant for this design. So this is the first uh, model in my collection, and uh, it's a two-piece. Uh, it's made from this really beautiful wool mixed with lurex from Italy, and it sort of has a glossy velvet uh, that fades into a really lovely twill, and it's paired with a silk satin skirt. I was really influenced by all the medallions and the bling that the uh, Miao and Buyi villagers wore in their clothing, and so I really wanted to incorporate that concept, and I did that here with these sequin panels or sequin medallions here on the skirt, and I really wanted to tie that in with the neckline and with the gloves as well. I took also the architectural elements of the Miao and Buyi jackets, the very easy fitted jacket, and um, with a one-piece sleeve and incorporated that. This is my second model, and it's really influenced by the silhouette of some of the Miao people that we saw in the Silver Villages. When the girls were in their regalia, they made this really fantastical silhouette that's not very Western at all. It's sort of like a little temple shape, and I really wanted to capture that effect with this dress. I picked a silk fabric that had a really beautiful uh, Swiss dot pattern woven into it in velvet with a little bit of lurex in it. So I also incorporated this antique uh, jet work that I had collected from various travels. So it was traditionally used on 
uh, morning clothes or um, black clothing, um, probably mostly through the Victorian and Edwardian period. And uh, this is actually authentic. I really love the idea that the Miao created clothing that could be passed down from generation to generation and really placed a value on textiles. So this is uh, model number three, and it has incorporated an actual hand-woven and hand-dyed fabric that I purchased in one of the Bui villages. This dress has tons of handwork just in the fabric alone. It's actually a cotton fabric or a flax, which is a very heavy fabric and more associated with daytime. So to give it a little more sheen and a little more uh, glamour, I put a layer of net over the top of it just so it'll reflect the light a little bit more and then uh, complement very nicely. I've got some really beautiful um, Swarovski metal and uh, crystal adornments here on the shoulder. All in all, the dress also has some handset uh, Swarovski crystal on the bottom of the hem. And then again, on this train, which is sort of, I call it uh, a dragon tail, normally the base of a gown, if there's a ruffle or a detail, it's called a mermaid gown or, or a fish tail. Uh, the back is very influenced by uh, the baby carriers that we saw used throughout the villages. I thought it was a really dramatic effect. So this is model number four and it's uh, sort of a daytime, late afternoon sort of lunchy look. And again, I've gone through the same concept with the, um, the little jacket with the one piece sleeve. I really fell in love with this shape. And in fact, the jacket from model number one and from this are basically the same pattern. So the difference is this one's made in a really beautiful black cashmere, imported cashmere. So again, continuing with the theme of adornments, I have incorporated these check glass buttons that are really, really gorgeous. And they create a nice triangular effect on the jacket when you look at them. So I paired it with this beautiful English silk, um, hand-woven, and it's normally used for neckties, but I really loved the sheen of it, and I thought working with the narrow panels uh, was a lot like how the Miao and Buyi people worked with their narrow hand-woven panels. This has been a wonderful experience for me and this has opened my, my eyes to design in such a global way. I usually have private shows but this is a great exposure and it's so meaningful as a designer to be able to share your work because this is your time to unveil what you want to express in your designs. This is my real way of expressing my feelings about my trip. This is the true most genuine way. And I couldn't even say it in words in some ways, um, but it's my garments that really speak. And this whole travel has um, changed me in a way that we're all actually like one, um, although we're so far away, but we're so much like together at the same time. Overall, this project has had an amazing impact on me, both personally and professionally. So everything from my aesthetics to the architecture of my work, every fabric of my work has been influenced by this trip and it's really brought my work up to a new level. The project has really helped me to grow, not just through the type of design work that I'm doing, but also with my ability to look for influence in places that I normally wouldn't. Everything about this trip has changed how I feel about myself, how I feel about my work, and it's just been an incredible pleasure to have been part of it.